Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility, episode 25 on March the 19th, 2012. We are talking tonight to Kim Morgado about that tiny little insect called a bee and how important the honeybee is in our world today. Thanks for listening. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Let's Talk Possibilities. And um, we are having um, Tilana today. Yes, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are having our guest, um, uh, who is uh, Kim Morgado, and he is um, the bee expert. Um, he is also calling himself Honey Beer. And um, actually, he can be reached via the website honeybeer.co.za. Um, and if you need more contacts, we can just supply you uh, with those a bit later. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm Elena, and um, we're going to talk about bees today. Yeah, and I'm very interested because I know ages ago I heard this. I think my mom came telling me, and she's so excited, and she's learning about bees. There's a problem with cell phones, and they are killing all our bees. And, and I'm, so, yeah, I'm very interested to hear what is happening with our bees in the world. Um, yeah, as well. Uh, but I think uh, the, the problem obviously can, can be um, a very big one in general because as we uh, learn that um, honeybees are number one uh, of the insect uh, pollinator and the one which is responsible for 90% of our crops. So without bees, we won't be able to have any apples or nuts or even cotton and cabbage and, you know, on our table. So um, what, Kim, what would you comment on that? Bees are totally essential for life. The famous scientist Einstein did say that if there were no bees, mankind in five years would be gone. Five years? Accordingly to yeah, Einstein. Sorry. But then again, might not be uh, all true because crops, like cereal crops, they do not need uh, bee pollination. They requ uh, require only wind. So we'll be able to have bread and beer, <laughs> <laughs> but no veggies, no nuts. No veggies, no nuts, no fruit. <laughs> no fruit, yes. What do you think about that statement which Tilana just uh, started with, uh, about bees related to the cell phones, uh, whether bees relate, uh, whether bees react on the cell phones? Yes, beekeepers do, do not believe in it. Okay. I might be, a, they find it an urban legend because... Uh, some of us made an experiment. They place hives under those uh, cell phone towers, uh, towers mm. and under them bees as healthy as in other ones in other places. Okay. Uh, it's a much more complicated uh, subject. It has to do mostly do with pesticides and insecticides that stay active for up to 15 years. Mm, mm. And those eventually, they go going to decimate the bees, yeah. make them so weak that uh, they are susceptible to catch up all sorts of parasitic uh, virus, yeah. bacteria, fungi, would be similar with a human with AIDS once the immune system is so challenged. So I think what you're talking about is what I read is, is the colony collapse disorder, which is, is mostly happening happening overseas, so you're saying it's yes, in, in yes, America? Yes, and yes, yes, and, and in Europe. Yeah, again, it had been traced specifically to some uh, long-term uh, active uh, uh, insecticides. Yeah, so, so just for anyone who doesn't know what it means, is what's, what's been happening, was, you can correct me, Kim, yes. yeah, is, <laughs> is what I've <laughs> read, been reading on your website, is the actual, what happens to the colony is when it, it it's obviously these pesticides infect, affect the immune system of all the bees and they have full of parasites and that is most of the bees swarm and they're swarming at odd times so not when they're meant to be and the bees that are left behind actually kill all the, the young bees that are still developing and they base the whole and it sounds like when they swarm they then die they don't go and create a new hive and the whole colony basically collapses that's why it's called colony collapse disorder and that's that entire colony of bees just 
die, basically it's not like women commit suicide, uh, they it, die. It, <laughs> yeah, it, they just die. Basically, they are so disease-ridden, they have no defense against... Uh, Any of uh, the parasites. Parasites, and the whatever, bacteria, fungi, mm. virus, that uh, virtually just uh, collapses. Uh, you, one should see a hive not... Hive might have fifty thousand bees, but should uh, should be seen as one unit. Mm. They are all working together in mm. in unison. And once uh, there is an external factor that dim diminish their capacities uh, to work in, um, in a healthy uh, way, it's just. Falls, it falls, yeah. By wayside, yes. And and so that that's why it's a concern, though, for for us as, as humans, is because if all of these hives are just falling, because they they can't, they don't have the immune system, we don't have then enough bees to go and pollinate our acres and acres and acres of trees and crops and and all yeah. of that, because that's one of the interesting things about bees. It's, it's um, is that we can. There, there's not in. We are now farming in in such a way that the local you call it the local bees? <laughs> yes. Mm. There's not enough to, to yes. pollinate, and hence yes. beekeepers like for, you move your bees. For, for instance, in, in South Africa, the avocados, macadamia, lychee uh, in subtropical areas, the um, uh, pears, apples, plums in uh, the... Uh, Mediterranean type of climate in, in around Cape Town, they are totally dependent on uh, beekeepers to move large amount of bees at that specific time of the year to pollinate that crop. The farmers, they have to pay so much per hive per day because if they do not have those uh, amount of bees to saturate that area uh, for pollination, um, they cannot uh, uh, have crop. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they have to be saturated. They have to be so many hives per acre. Okay, and and as you say, at that specific time when the, yes. the bloom, uh, uh, yes. the flowers and blossom. Yes, <laughs> and <laughs> for instance, in America, to pollinate the almond production, which is the world uh, biggest, is they have about, if I'm not wrong, something like 75% of production that almonds, they need upwards of 1 million hives. Mm. That come That's from all, all over sure. America, yeah. and even from Australia. In America, they move them in refrigerate tracks to keep them pacified, sure. and also half hibernating, mm. so they do not need m much food, they are not uh, very active. And um, they just keep moving, like uh, they would spend the winter in Florida doing the oranges and also getting nectar and pollen mm. from the oranges and getting paid. And then as spring starts, they move gradually upwards for apples and pears, going um, further up into the more... Uh, um, Ge geographical areas that the, the spring comes late, so gradually okay. they, they move north. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, so here in the, the, oh. sorry, the bees play such an important role, as you're saying, Total. in 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 it, and then yeah. So what's been happening then with with fixing the problem? Is there or are we still Look, trying uh, to find uh, out what is causing it? Uh, suddenly, there uh, was a lot of panic in, in Europe. So, uh, for instance, a lot of Europeans. They ask South African farms to um, produce seed of all sorts of products mm, like carrots or uh, um, onions. Mm. Um, like in Europe, suddenly they are realizing that the normal production, uh, agricultural production, uh, was collapsing. Uh, there were no bees. Also, the native species of uh, uh, vegetation, if they're not pollinated, eventually they will disappear. Yeah, yeah. So, and they had to find out why or what. Suddenly, the bees are disappearing. And there were all sorts of theories. One of them was the cell phone masts. And more and more uh, has been accepted that the um, 
uh, insecticides, the pesticide, pe yeah. pe pesticides, yeah. and uh, because the, also the, we live now in a global village, what happened that virus that you were only existing in Israel, one of those, another one in Australia, suddenly they've gone globally. Mm -hmm. In the, those, the local bees that might have found over millennia defenses or human systems against them, but not to the ones that in, foreign, yeah. uh, uh, in other parts yeah. of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And suddenly they were just decimating the bees left, right, and center. Um, other things that uh, are affecting bees is the monoculture, which means for a beehive to be successful, to reproduce itself in a healthy manner, it leads lots of good quality and di diversified pollen. But these days, because large tracts of natural vegetation had been destroyed to put monocrops, so they only have monopollen, so it weakens them. And those, I would yeah. say, they are the main uh, causes, pesticides and insecticides mono and monocrops. I suppose the beekeepers moving them around and work them uh, extensively does not help either. What would you say about the mites? How, how uh, does that work? Because that's what I learned as well, that apparently this is the parasites which can, uh, which can um, yeah, just fly from uh, one, one hive to another hive in order to yes. affect bees, the healthy bees. There is a specific by, uh, mite called Varroa. It comes from mostly... The most variant comes from Korea. In the Orient, China, Korea, uh, they didn't have European bees, Apis mellifera, mellifera. Uh, they had their own local versions that, again, over millennia, they found the defenses against the local parasites. One of them is a tiny mite, that, as I mentioned. Yeah. Because they imported that, uh, the European bees to that area, so they were getting to, uh, parasited with them, and gradually moved in, into Russia. In, 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 in Russia, they were studying it, and then it escaped from Russia. And it went through, like wildfire through Europe, and then it passed to America to other areas where, uh, uh, like even mm. New Zealand, mm to other areas uh, that they had European bees. Okay. And virtually every single uh, wild swarm in Europe or, or um, um, they had escaped in America or, for instance, in Australia, South America, it were, were decimated, uh, feral is sure. the term in those areas, had, were decimated by, by the varroa. Um, and only way that beekeepers could, still today the same, can keep them go is to treat them in the hive uh, through uh, um, aromatic oils, for instance, like thyme. But very quickly the varroa uh, gets immunity to those. So they have to find okay. them the new ones, ones all okay. the time. Um, does it relate to any specific continent? Because you said that they escaped from Russia, unfortunately. It, but, uh, no, <laughs> but it <laughs> comes from Korea. Okay. And they, they are rich Russian and they were studying them in Russia, okay. some laboratory. And for some reason, they escaped from the laboratory mm. And but does it but does it mean, for instance, that in Europe there are more mites than in Africa, or maybe in some other continent? You see, so those mites, again, the the, the very uh, virulent ones come from uh, Korea, and with the mites comes all sorts of parasitic uh, uh, microbes, uh, virus. Okay. And and. So n not only the, those mites parasiting them and sucking the, the blood of the young mm. larvae, yeah. also bring them uh, a very nasty virus. Okay. Um, but they arrived here in, in, in South Africa, and our bees very quickly found ways to combat them. Okay. Um, I, ha I do not have to treat my eyes, my bees, my hives for yeah. anything. They are v they're very tough. The only problems that I, we have now in Dan is uh, a parasitic uh, 
form of the cape bees um, once they take over a hive, that hive collapse because they breed um, as if they were every one of them, uh, every female one, if there were, was a, a queen. Okay. But um, we're still doing um, beekeeping in a very successful manner, but we are very aware about it. In main area, actually, one catches them is when we go to the Ellos in July, August. So I stop in a number of other beekeepers, stop going there. Okay. Because if you go there, you're going to lose about three quarters of your hives mm, there. Mm, mm, sure. Um, in the UK, they, um, they started to such a movement as to become a beekeeper as one of the prevention measures. Because, uh, I mean, you have a couple of hives and I'm sure that you started small and probably now you go more bigger and bigger. <laughs> so what do you think about it? It's the greatest hobby. I mean, you could see those... Well How did you start? Oh, well, I started with one. <laughs> and, and my family had hives when I was a child. It was a part of the culture to be self-sufficient, to have your own honey. You boast about the quality <laughs> of your honey. <laughs> and in Europe now, especially like in the UK, it's a very well to do to go and say, oh, come and taste my, yeah. my honey. I should put my <laughs> English accent. <Yeah. laughs> and some of them, they said, oh, they move them to the moors for the heather or to any other crop and even to parts in the continent. They are almost fanatic about it and they are, it's their hobby to have. You can go to Paris, if they will allow you, you go to the top of the Opera House, there yeah. are about eight hives there. Hmm. Okay. The most prized honey in Japan comes from some hives in the main park, a botanical garden, a huge botanical garden in the center of Tokyo. Okay. Because in Japan they have very little... Um, crop uh, natural vegetation okay. diversity yeah, yeah, yeah. so the honey is nothing special uh, but there in from the, uh, let's call it Central Park I mean it's something special and you pay okay. uh, uh, for, to have privilege to taste it's a number in New York I heard about a hotel that has some hives in the roof and they are allowed to go there and watch them uh, uh, through a glass oh, okay, window yeah, okay, and okay. you can point out from which hive you like to have oh, your really? breakfast It's honey. like a little bee show. <laughs> okay, they can I mean, organize a, a bee, bee show. show. Yeah. <laughs> in, in taste afterwards. Okay, uh, it's only in New York, right? In here, for instance, in Johannesburg, more and more well-to-do people keep asking me, please, please, put some hives in my garden. Oh, really? I won't have... My garden to be pollinated by own bees. If I going to have my, some my uh, my own honey, my life will be complete. <laughs> but how dangerous is that actually for for people to have their hives, especially for people who really don't have special knowledge, like you are mentioning, uh, in order to complete somebody's life? How do you think it can be dangerous for African them? African bees, extremely productive, more productive than European bees, far more resistant to disease. Mm. I mean, productive, can make more honey, double, yeah. Pro yeah. Pro produce yeah. more than double the European bees, more resistance to, to disease, but they're also extremely uh, protective. Let's call them defensive of their hives. The Americans with their uh, hi hi hyperbole, are you saying English? Hyperbole, yeah. Yes, hyperbole, hyperbole yes. Uh, they call them uh, killer bees. Okay. Like <laughs> the blue gums, they are killer trees. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, you keep hearing the news that uh, some people have been stung virtually to death. Yeah. Cows, horses, dead. Mm. Uh, they have had tough predators and by Darwinism, if you do not adapt to uh, find a way to survive, Spidey. you are goners. Yeah. Yeah. So the only way that Africa can uh, with uh, terrible enemies like men, 
and the ratel, <laughs> the honey badger. Okay, yeah, of if course. If you are weak, for instance, you have a hundred hives in a site, it might be a ratel in the, that area. You go there after a couple of weeks, not one hive is standing, everything okay. is broken to wow. smithers. Wow, wow, wow. So we have to find a ways to combat ratel. One of them is to put them on stilts. <laughs> <laughs> Other one is to make them very well made, very strong, and tie them very strongly to the ground so it cannot uh, push, them uh, over. push them over and break them to pieces. Okay. I'm sure you get asked this often, have you been stung quite a bit? Thousands of times. <laughs> 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 a, a, a beekeeper, uh, a beekeeper. Yeah. Whatever on earth is the healthiest person in that particular community, village, whatever. We do not suffer from all sorts of autoimmune problems: arthritis, gout, hypertension, uh, um, okay. a, a number of, of problems. And why is that? Because the bee venom keeps us uh, in a very health, healthy shape. Mm. Oh, wow. uh, we eat uh, good pollen, good honey, and we are active. A beekeeper never retires. <laughs> and uh, so we live a healthy, we work hard, and we enjoy life. I know like our bees. So. I know that you produce quite a lot of different products. What would you recommend out of your own range? What's the best for, let's say, to keep your healthy besides uh, venom? If, if you be, don't be, have access be, to be venom. venom. Oh, it's like I don't want to go and be stung <laughs> Yeah, it's not like you want to be... Uh, <laughs> for instance, you can click on the internet. You go there, bee venom uh, melanoma or okay. bee venom cancer, you will see there that one sting will kill any form of skin cancer, including melanoma. Okay. And people still die with melanoma. I cannot understand why, because it's known by a scientific research that uh, one bee sting anywhere in the body will kill the melanoma. It's unbelievable, powerful autoimmune mm. uh, fix. And, uh, and uh, cancer is just... Uh, what do you mean problem, like arthritis? Mm. Okay. So, so what's interesting is then the, the bee doesn't just make honey. I think that's what yeah, we course. just think. But there's a lot of medicinal uh, properties of honey and also the different bee products. So a beehive is most wonderful, complex, extraordinary chemical factory. Uh, very quickly, honey is the best product. It's used now in the top hospitals in Europe, for instance, for burns, wounds, for face surgery, uh, face reconstruction, uh, ulcers like diabetic ulcers, mm. bad ulcers, is an unbelievable healing product. It's much quicker, without uh, uh, much pain, and uh, hardly with scarring. Mm. Is what they're using now in top hospitals. Okay. Uh, here in South Africa, it's still uh, quite backwards about that. So besides the bee venom and the honey, uh, there is bee pollen. There is no supplement can compare. For instance, people in South Africa, they're still popping mm. pills. About six, seven years ago, a research from Denmark, you can click yeah. over there, and you put antioxidants, life expectancy. Mm. We tell you the people pop pills, vitamin A, E, C, beta carotene, selenium, and a number of other ones, should expect to live less between seven to nine years. Uh, there is a syndrome now, uh, I don't know exactly name, but it's a healthy person's syndrome. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they want to be so healthy, popping all those pills that they're killing themselves. Yeah. Bee pollen has everything. Has all vitamins, amino acids, trace elements in right proportion. Is it accessible via your shop? Yes, I have both fresh bee pollen, which means the one is trapped at the entrance of the hive. Yeah. They keep around the legs and fermented or bee bread that is taken from the cells themselves, from inside the, of the hive uh, to the around where the queen breeds, called brood chamber. Mm. These you might read in uh, the internet, uh, but you will never find it. I have it. <laughs> it. Okay, okay. So, so that's Anywhere on earth. You cannot import it. <laughs> I've also heard about royal jelly. Okay. Uh, so th what is that again? What part of the... 
bee is, system? <laughs> is what queen eats. Okay. From birth to death, queen only eats royal jelly. Royal jelly is a foamy, white, uh, bitter, bitterish substance that um, Ivarian bees between about three and eight, three and nine days old, be secrete from specific glands, superpharyngeal, if I'm not wrong. Is most prized item in the hive. All of the bees, all worker bees are female, and all the bees, all the, all the larvae of the worker bees, or the males, drones, for the first day, they eat royal jelly. And from royal jelly, they graduate to pollen. Uh, going back about royal jelly, considering that a queen is the most extraordinary egg-laying machine, she can lay every day twice around weight 2,000 eggs a day on average. Oh, so, okay. Uh, uh, every day um, in eggs. Mm, it's a lot of eggs. In all the nourishments, all vitamins, minerals, amino acids, mm, tracing mm, that mm. she might need, protein, it's all in royal jelly. Okay. So since millennium, or since people know about it, they try to use it uh, as a medicine, as a supplement, uh, and as a cosmetic. Because, for instance, the top French houses, they have in all their products... Uh, face of creams, course, they definitely. have royal jelly. Okay. And this is all accessible again via your shop? Yes, I do have some. Okay. Um, and uh, we mentioned about the pollen, yes. Um, for instance, it has four times the amount of protein as fish. Oh, wow. Plus, uh, okay. And the, the big complex is all there in the right proportions. It's fantastic, extraordinary gift of, of, of nature. You see people that they had been on chemotherapy or radiation that uh, they are not in a good shape at mm. all, uh, and suddenly they have some pollen, bee pollen. Yeah, how quickly they start to have color within mm. two or three days and the body movements, the action is, yeah, is okay. nothing happened. Wow. So, right, so it's very, very powerful. The one other one I wanted to ask was the pro propolis. Propolis. What's, what's okay. that Okay, uh, uh, very quickly. A beehive, suppose 55, 60,000 bees mm. uh, in two cubic feet on top of each other, so terribly overcrowded. In a hot environment, uh, 36, 38 degrees, full of sugar and humid. Exactly the same conditions that uh, uh, laboratories breathe the uh, microbes. Yeah. Sugar, humidity, heat, and overcrowded. So the first thing... <laughs> A, a spore <laughs> of any bacteria, fungi, or whatever, yeah. uh, you will go like wildfire. They will eliminate the bees. Yeah. Bees that shouldn't exist in actual fact. Of course. Till they use the same products that the plants use to protect themselves against those same p parasitic uh, uh, microbes by taking the resin tiny amount of resin that usually the plants, specific plants, mm. put under their buds okay. to protect them against yeah. these parasites. Yeah, 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 yeah. So collect the tiny amounts of resin by specialized bees, because some bees, they do different functions in the hive, okay. and they mix it, that resin, with a little bit of uh, beeswax and enzymes. It makes the best natural antifungal, by antibacterial, viral mm. that, that exists. Uh, and they, from the entrance of the hive, they, they close the entrance, only so make small holes for them to go through. They bake uh, all over holes, uh, um, the, the frames where we make our honey, they cover yeah. it. Okay. Uh, even before the queen lays eggs, they clean the cells with propolis, disinfect it. And sure. So, so that's, that's used then in cosmetics and yes. again 
Yes. Uh, you, um, for instance, Egyptians, uh, ancient Egyptians discover about it. If um, they watch the mouse go in, uh, in winter cold, because it's food and it's warm there, eventually the bees will kill it, and it should go uh, rotten, you know, f mm. yeah. full of spores spreading. But no, they cover it with uh, propolis. Mm -hmm. It mummified preserved forever. Yeah. Is where the mummification started. When Very I, easy way oh, to preserve. When I was little, I was uh, fed by propolis every single time when I had flu That's or something it. like that. So it's actually extremely popular in Russia. Yes, no, and the in, in, is in, yeah, in in Eastern Europe, it's really uh, yes. quite quite uh, yes. quite a popular thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's very fish um, for wounds. For instance, your pet dog has a fight, has some fang wounds. Normally, they go septic. They have to go to the vet and all the rest. But they are, um, oh, you've been fighting. You put two drops yeah. on it. Today's is dry hill. You cannot see what happens. Exactly. exactly. Very efficient. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much for, for coming and sharing, Kim, because oh, I just thought a bee was a little insect, you know, and, you, and understood that they, they, um, they're important for pollination. But I didn't until, you know, talking to you actually understand how much there actually is from, from the bees. And I know that from all the research, I mean, there's medicine, obviously it helps us health-wise, cosmetic-wise, food-wise. Um, we haven't even got time to go into the, the wood polish that, of that course, you know, yeah. that yes, the products yeah. that they actually can go. So wow. This theme and is so big, actually, that we really can continue talking <laughs> and talking and talking about it. We, but I think that the main point we wanted to make with, with us was, was talking about the... That I mean, in the one, one of the questions we had is: Is it actually is oh, it how important? Yeah, yeah, exactly. How important? But but this, someone thought, may isn't it not a conspiracy theory that that the bees could die? But it's actually understanding that there is a problem, you know, that, that with bees and the as you say, the colony collapse syndrome mm -hmm. that's happening. But hopefully, like our research is doing something because we need to protect our bees. They they provide so much. Absolutely. For us. You Absolutely. abuse the earth, you will pay. It's yeah. like uh, the, the weather. If, uh, or you destroy forests, uh, you destroy the earth. You know. Yeah. And you probably, he, I think bees also one of those indicators uh, showing how healthy the planet is, that's of it. course. So that's, yes, that's yes, one of those. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. They're yeah. very fragile. If, for instance, in large areas of China, there are no more bees because they overspray. I heard in South Africa, in a specific area. Mm. Uh, were overspray or uh, with pesticides that area, and they used to be well known uh, for pears. You, you, that program, uh, that documentary, was on uh, TV here. Um, yeah, now these days, they go with a tiny paintbrush, mm. flower to flower, uh, to pollinate by hand. Is the only way they can have fruit. Sure. Yeah. Can you see now? Yeah. Uh, to all avocado trees, you pay. Yeah. I mean, you can't do that. Of course. How many people should they do that? <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Of course, you can't. Yeah. Well, yeah. with that in mind, so either we're going to have to have you know sit there, stand there with paintbrushes and and pollinate if we want to have <laughs> exactly. some fruit and, exactly. and nuts, or we're going to have to look after our bees. And um, if you would like to know more about um, Kim and, and Shoy's wealth of knowledge, his website again is the Honey Bear. And that's B E A R. Um, you can also obviously find more about him on our website. Just just go and Google, you know, put into your search engine Let's Talk Possibility. You'll find yes. out all about us. And yeah, thanks thanks for joining in. Um, let's Thank keep talking about much. all these possibilities and, and specifically let's talk about bees. If you've got any more questions, just come find us on Facebook and yeah. add your questions. Thank you very much for listening and hopefully you learned lots and lots and lots about bees and how uh, how healthy they are and what they bring in our life. And uh, Kim, thank you very much for being here. I'm honored to be here. Thank you.